me is Mohi Sham and this is my second video which is based on the UVM class hierarchy. So if you have seen my first video which is based on the UVM test bench architecture so you would be knowing about all the UVM components and objects which will be used to implement a UVM based verification environment. So all these UVM components and objects are the basic building block of the verification environment in UVM. So I will just give a quick review for all those components which is, uh, which is used to create a verification environment. So as I have discussed in my previous video, these are a few UVM test bench component or I can say uh, UVM UVM environment blocks. So we have test, environment, agent, sequence items, sequence, sequencer, driver, monitor, scoreboard. So these are the basic building blocks of a verification environment in UVM. So I have uh, discussed in detail in the first video. Now, now I am going to discuss how we will implement it. So as you know that in UVM is a set of base classes. So UVM library provide us a very uh, usable or we can, uh, we can say that reusable uh, predefined classes for user defined uh, components or objects. So we, we will just use all, the, all those uh, base classes to implement user defined, uh, user defined class. So suppose if we are going to implement our test, so how we will implement it, from where we will drive it. So actually uh, for user defined classes, we have to drive it from the base classes which UVM library provides. So today I will tell you that uh, from which UVM class we have to drive our class. So I will just tell you about uh, these things today. So now I will move to the UVM class hierarchy. So as you can see, we have main four base classes. So we have UVM void, UVM object, UVM report object and UVM component. These are the main base classes of UVM hierarchy. So what is UVM void? UVM void is just a, as it as the name indicates void. So it's an empty. It's an empty class actually. So UVM void class is a base class for all UVM classes. So everything uh, which you can see over here is derived from the UVM void. So it is an abstract class or we can say it as a virtual class it doesn't have any data member or functions so it's an it's just an abstract class which is uh, uh, which is behaving as base class for all the remaining uh, UVM base classes so UVM void is the main base class after that we have UVM object as you can see UVM object is derived from UVM void so UVM void is a is the parent class for UVM object we can say that so after that we have UVM report object UVM report object is derived from UVM object and then we have UVM component UVM component is derived from the UVM report object so in all of these four classes the UVM object and UVM component these are the main classes from which most of the uh, UVM component or UVM objects will be derived. So now I will explain for each and every class. So I have already discussed about the UVM void. So as you know UVM void is a uh, UVM void is a base class for all the UVM classes and it is an abstract class or virtual class which has no data members and functions inside it. After that I will come to the UVM object. So UVM object is derived from UVM void as you can see in the diagram also. And now what this UVM object provides us. So UVM object provides us the different fun many functions, many 
uh, we can say methods which is pre-built inside UVM object. So the the subclasses of this UVM object can access those methods. So UVM object contains methods like create, copy, print, compare, clone, etc. And macros and identification fields are also defined inside UVM objects. So the UVM void is uh, an empty class, which is a base class for all of uh, all the remaining classes. Then UVM object it is derived from UVM void. UVM objects provides uh, the methods which is defined inside UVM object and macros and identification fields are also defined inside this UVM object. So this is the base class for all the UVM objects. So what I will just tell you what is derived from UVM object. So the UVM report object is derived from the UVM object and UVM transaction is derived from the UVM object. So these are these are the things which which is of object type. So it just uh, like a data. So UVM transaction is derived from the UVM object. UVM sequence item is derived from the UVM transaction and UVM sequence is derived from UVM sequence item. So this is a hierarchy which is uh, following in this uh, UVM base class. So UVM object is just like a data. So if if we are if we are going to create some transaction or some sequence item, then uh, there is already uh, the the subclass is present which is derived from the UVM object. So suppose if we are creating a, a UVM transaction or UVM sequence item, then we will uh, derive it from UVM sequence item. So if we are going to implement a UVM sequence, then we will derive it from the UVM sequence. So actually UVM transaction is uh, depreciated now. So in place of UVM transaction, we will derive our uh, transactions from the UVM sequence item because it will provide uh, some additional methods. So that, that's why we will use UVM sequence items uh, for the UVM transaction. Uh, if we are going to implement UVM uh, if you are going to implement some transaction class, then we will drive it from UVM sequence item. So after that, uh, UVM report object comes. So as the name suggest, suggests, uh, UVM report objects, it is used for the reporting facility. So suppose it just uh, working as an interface uh, between the it just working as an interface. So uh, suppose if uh, if uh, uh, the environment or the art if in if we want some information from the environment so we can just report it through UVM report object so there are uh, four already defined methods uh, we have uh, we have UVM info UVM fatal UVM UVM warning and UVM error. So these are uh, the four severity which UVM report object provides. So with the help of uh, these four methods, we can report uh, the simulation results. So uh, I will just uh, discuss about uh, the UVM object in detail actually, because the UVM object and UVM component are the most important uh, blocks in the uh, UVM class hierarchy. So I will just uh, tell you few more things. So I, in the previous, uh, I have discussed uh, only two things which is derived from the UVM object, UVM report object and UVM transactions. So there are few other things in UVM which is derived from the UVM object. So these things we have already uh, discussed. The UVM transaction is derived from the UVM object. UVM sequence item is derived from the UVM transaction. UVM sequence is derived from the UVM sequence item except, except that UVM phases UVM phases is derived from the UVM object but it is not used in the object so I will I will come to come later on that point where it will be used so but it will uh, it will it is defined from a UVM object only UVM report object is derived from the UVM uh, object only. We have already discussed about this. Then we have UVM callbacks. 
I will come. Uh, we will uh, discuss these things in detail later. But uh, today, I'm just going to. Uh, I'm just going to discuss what are the things which is derived from the UVM object and UVM component. So UVM callback is also derived from the UVM object. So we can say that UVM callback is object type data. So after that we have a rel model. So in rel model we have UVM res, which is uh, just like a register implementation. UVM res, UVM res block. UVM res file, UVM res field, all these things are derived from the UVM object only. After that, uh, we have uh, the resource DB. We have UVM resource which is derived from the UVM object. Then we have resource DB which is uh, derived from UVM resource. Then we have UVM config DB which is uh, later uh, implemented and uh, which is derived from the UVM resource DB. So actually UVM resource DB is now depreciated. We will use UVM config DB. It's also a very important uh, thing in UVM environment. So I will uh, discuss uh, in detail later, but I just uh, provide, I'm just uh, telling you that these things will be uh, the, the base class for these things is UVM object. So after that, I have discussed the UVM report object. So I will come to the UVM component now. So UVM component is also a very uh, important base class. So as you know, we have UVM test, UVM environment, UVM agent, UVM monitor, UVM driver, UVM sequencer, UVM scorebook, everything. These all things are of component type. Actually, the thing is, first we have to understand what is a component and what is an object so component is just a, a component will be quasi static in nature so these will exist throughout the simulation and objects will be created and we can say created and delivered when it is used so whenever we want to use uh, we want to send some data or we want to receive some data then we will use the UVM objects but UVM components are those block which will send or receive those data so you, so this is a basic difference between UVM object and UVM component so UVM component will exist throughout the simulation but UVM object will exist on that time when it when it is in use only so suppose we are going to implement a, a UVM test, then we will drive it from the UVM component. Or a UVM test is derived from the UVM component. But if we, if the user is implementing user-defined test, then we will drive it from UVM test. If we are going to implement our environment class, then we will drive it from the UVM UVM environment. If we are going to write user defined agent class, then we will drive it from the UVM agent. So if you are going to implement the monitor, driver, UVM sequencer or scoreboard, then we will drive it from these base classes which UVM is already providing us. So in every class there is a predefined methods present. So we will use those methods and it will make our environment reusable and we don't need to implement everything for, uh, we don't need to create everything from start. So we already have the techniques, we already have the methods which is defined in the base class. We will just create our, our uh, user defined class and we will just uh, implement the functionality which we want to do in that and we will use the, the pre-existing methods uh, like pre-existing methods for communication and for uh, passing the data so for everything we already have the methods which is defined in these base class so it will just uh, reduce the work of a verification guy so we, we will uh, we will just use the pre-existing classes only to implement a verification environment 